Good afternoon. Welcome to this special October 28th Open Gate show. Now on YouTube, Spotify, and space, Facebook. The Open Gate show enlightening local and overseas fans on each horses in the 1000 running of the Jamaica Derby in honor of Sir John Mordecai, who was a stalwart in the horse racing industry here in Jamaica. The Jamaica Derby to be run this Saturday, 31st of October. 11 horses were declared on Tuesday, 27th. Hello, racing fan. This is Emila Bimbo Rodriguez. Listen to the Open Gate Show with Colin Blair, giving you the latest tips and reviews on the horses. Big up the number one show. Greetings, everyone. This is George Osang, listening to Open Gate Show. Number one, take a listen. I'm Michael Edwards from New York. I only listen to the Open Gate Show. It's the number one show in the land. It's informative. Please support Colin Blair in his effort to educate, to teach all turf fights about handicapping. Remember, Pure pride, Jamaican bottled water. Pure water, a pure water we drink. Rehydrate yourself to ensure that your body function in every part. The Derby on Saturday, 11 horses were declared. Number one, Money Monster, a gelding owned and bred and trained by Fitzroy Glispy. Bred casual trick by she's traditional by tradition by traditional better a moderate field going nine for twenty five yards on Saturday September eleventh in splits one fifteen and a fifth by one forty two and two fifth by one fifty seven and two fifth for that event beating third place. 1,000 Guinea, Guinness winner, Sen City, in that. Money Monster, a best race, was on Boxing Day, December 26th, last season, as a two-year-old going a mile, finishing third, three lengths behind Wow Wow, running evenly in splits of 110 and 2 fifths by 138 and 3 fifths for that mile. All horses sat level, 57 kilos, except for the Phillies, that had 55 kilos in that race. Money Monster has not progressed much coming to this season as a trio due to issues of which his trainer is trying to sort out. He last ran in this Seymour Foggy Mullins Memorial Trophy over a mile on the 10th of October, three weeks before this, this derby date on Saturday, finishing a floundering fort to Eroy, King Arthur and Fairness Champion with 114 pounds. The Grisby Derby aspirant has transformed into a, in a positive way since that last race, as he really looked impeccable when galloping nine furlongs on the round course in 156 and a fifth, a bit easy. That was on Monday, the 25th, where the first seven was in a smooth 130 and a fifth, and he pulled up in 156 and a fifth. A possible outsider seeing he is a very powerful built triole. Happy customer of late in the morning. Bread to get a distance of ground. Orlando Foster rides and had this to say about his mount, Money Monster. Number two, Chapanza Bread Ham Farms Limited. Owner, Naya, trainer, Richard Azan. Trained by Richard Azan, this great filly by American Dance and Beware Baby by Friendly, friendly Lover. Had, a, had a just over a month ago, on the 27th of February, going seven and a half furlong, won in a facile victory, opposing some that were just getting their act together. 
However, the splits of 46 and a fifth by 110 and 4 fifths, final time in 131 and 4 fifths, must be respected. Allegri, Wiry Philly, who's dumb, the way baby has produced Big Daddy Cool, Supreme Soul, etc. All good stairs. I've not been taken to task, but has put on some weight. Looking fluent on October 19th, seven furlongs in 127 and 2 fifths. Has scope to improve and is quietly expected to run well by a few railbirds. Visiting Panamanian jockey Dick Cardenas rides. Number three, a double crown, a chestnut gelding, bred Bellamy Road by Salty Talk by Midshipman, born here in Utero, owned by PJK team, trained by Ian Passard, will be making his eighth career start. This legged gelding was once thought to be one of the top cla classic horses, as he's well bred for relentless stamina, but may still need time to show his true work as later on in the season. It is horses like these who comes with a good display for a middle order placing at long odds in the top five category. Then Dawkins rides after finishing seventh in the September 26th St. Ledger Classic. Number four, another affair tested Philly by Nuclear Wayne by Comanja Affair by Black Tie Affair, owned and bred by Michael Bernard, trained by Gary Sobrati, did well in her sex with, in, with, amongst her sex group and ran only 10 times with two wins. Her first attempt going two turns in the Jamaica Oaks, she lost in a head bob to uh, the newness train above and beyond. She came back next out and led in a terrible fashion and weakened into six spot in, in the Jamaica St. Ledger, where stablemates Nipster and Wow Wow came first and second. Uh, th this horse had a lot of hope for a better finish. And in that in that race, the St. Ledger, where she led in a terror fashion, opening up from eight length, she still managed to finish six behind stable maids Nipster Wow Wow and one of a kind, Morgan and King Arthur. Another fern next out, she came out awkward out the gates, dislodging her rider and gapped twice around the track. Has she lost some edge for that? Miss up? Maybe, maybe not. I'm expecting a more restrained ride this time. And if not affected by that affair on last, could keep on for a top five placing, as she possessed fair amount of stamina. Jerome Innes is again asked to pilot the Lady Philly, who looked fluent on Monday, the 25th, six furlongs, cruising in 120 and 4 fifth. Number five, Nipster, a bay coat by Casual Trick, by Nippet, by Legal Process, owned and bred by Michael Bernard, trainer Gary Sobrati. Small but gutsy colt who has improved against Nemesis, who has credentials for this prestigious race on Saturday. He won in fine style, the Jamaica St. Ledger, and projects he will get this 12 furlong trip easily. No matter how the race is run, he should be in the one two because his forte is stamina. He went 130 and 3 fifths for seven furlongs, pulling up in 207 for nine furlongs on the round course, Monday the 25th. He has looked fully oiled this morning, three days from the big event come Saturday. Linton Stedman again rides for another classic win. Number six, one of a kind, a chested coat out of Fair's Vision by the Golden One, by Royal Minister Owen Joseph Lewar, bred by Orange Valley Estate Limited, trainer Anthony Nunes, small coat who will be making a sixth career start, a vastly improved sort who could be still improving. Close well in the St. Ledger for a third place finish 
and was inching towards Wow Wow, approaching the winning post. That run drew more respect for this this one, especially going and added two furlongs. He has been given very high expectations in certain quarters, especially with the jockey huge fan club. Then Nelson rides. He galloped easily on Monday the 27th, seven furlongs in 130 and the fifth, pulling up in 2 or Putting up in 205 for nine furlongs. Number seven, Wow Wow, a casual trick called by Sarah Barracuda, by prized, bred, and owned by Michael Bernard, gives the bar to train. I should immediately remark owner, breeder Michael Bernard made history by owning and breeding the first two place finish finishers in the St. Ledger, that's Nipster and Wow Wow. Let's see if that. Seat is extended come a Saturday. Wow Wow has amassed over $40 million in purse money from 11 victories out of 13 starts. He is the class of the Derby field and should get this 12 furlong distance. Regardless, he flattened in the last furlong in the St. Ledger. Pace makes the race and seemingly there was only a plan A for that race. He will be ridden much better. The Open Gate Show is sure there will be a plan A, plan B, and plan C, of which I'm optimistic will just, will just about make him get the derby distance. If, that is, he doesn't stay. On Monday, he skipped some from the 135 and 250, pulling up in 159 flat for nine fellows on the round course. He's ready for all and sundry come Saturday. Robert Halladine, he will ride. Number eight, Morgany, a chest of Gelding by Sensational Slam, by Meteorite, by Traditional Bread, by Clovis Metcalf OD, owned by P. Ellis H. Pratt, T. Pragnell, and Karen Passard, Ian Passard, trains, talented individual who ran below par in the St. Ledger, his first attempt going two turns. That first place finish had majority of his fans jumping ship where most went on the one of a kind bandwagon. This horse is from a barn that treats their horses with maximum attention. We can throw out that St. Ledger run, but how is he after that? He has been much calmer and not as flashy as before when exercising. On Monday 18th, he looked okay going seven furlong in 120 and 4 fifths, pulling up in 204 and 2549 furlongs round. That awesome display on August 16th over eight and a half furlongs in splits of 45 4, 110 flat and 123 and 2 fifths by 132 and 2, final time 143, was just inches out of the track, the long standing track record. Track record. <laughs> well, we ain't dreaming, but that was a great display. I'm sure connections will be on with a tactic that will have him early and likely to take the lead approach in the sixth furlong point. Let's see the outcome. Omar Walker is again the rider. Number nine, King Arthur, a big gelding by Natural Selection, out of Jesus Art, by Pat and Jack, owned by Carlton Watson bred, Glennie Robinson, when the Costa OD the trainer making a sixth start since the COVID reopening. Reliable horse who didn't, didn't fare too much in the, cent, in the cent ledger. He came back next out and tried as he might, found the Richard Azan trained Eroy in a mean mood, even though that one was allowing him nine pounds. King Arthur has been light to train since since the St. Ledger, but when 106 and 5th for 5 and a half furlongs on the 18th of October, Philip Parchment is slated to ride this horse, who is bred to stay a distance of ground. Number 10, Green Gold Rush, a Bay Gellin by Adore the Gold, by Princess Lorna, by Law of the Sea, owned and bred by Winston Tracy, trainer, Junior Small, will saddle. He has got back his rhythm since last race on September the 16th after changing stables. 
not prepared to get beyond seven furlongs, but ran well enough at a mile on August 15th after being allowed four kilos for a blanket finish where a short head separated the top three. That was Iroy, Nipster, and the Green Gold Rush, respectively. Chanelis gets the call and he'll be rated with hopes to have a slice of the Derby cake. Number 11, fearless champion, Aron own Court, bred fearless vision by Granville Grito, by Easy Real Thing, owned Carlton Watson, bred YS 1955 Limited, train away in the cost OD. He skipped the St. Ledger <clears throat> after getting a change of groom and a victory going seven and a half furlongs in a moderate time of 1.33 and a fifth. I'm not sure how he is presently, seeing he looked very uncomfortable yesterday morning after he worked. The, as I, let me emphasize, pace makes the race. The tactics employed by the connections for mahogany seemingly has confused the rest of the jockeys and where most of them i would imagine only had plan a this is a different kettle of fish this will be a more moderate pace not because it's going 12 furlongs but because i think some respect has been lost by, with mahogany so this should energize the wow wow connection into employing a tactic that will suit wow wow to last out my selection from this point in time wednesday october 28th nipster just from wow wow mahogany money monster one of a kind in that order the open gate show wishes all connections the best of luck i left the horse they eat for first well not even in the movies that is possible join me friday where the final analyzation of the derby card will be heard then on saturday afternoon i'll be on for the thunder race meet take care friday here i come my name is alfred brown race australian at cayman and spark i advise everyone to listen to the open gate show you'll get a lot of information have a great day Hi, good evening. My name is trainer Frederick Watson, living in Queens, New York. I listen to the Open Gate show all the time, and it's very interesting. I listen like Jackie, like Everton Miller, a lot of people spoken, and it is so tremendous by listening to it.